All right, guys, you may remember this post way back 2018, seven years ago. It's hard to believe. I made this Soapbox Sunday post, and in it, I introduced a little device called the Quantasylum QA401 that the uh, nice people over at Quantasylum had sent to me uh, for free to try out and maybe make a video on or whatnot. Well, I was trying to use it to replace, uh, I was using two different things at that point in time. The Pete Millet software tied with the HP 8903B, which is, by the way, is a great little setup, but uh, it's really hard to get the drivers to work uh, hardware-wise and the software to run on Windows 10 or 11. So you almost have to have an older dedicated machine just for that. I was also using the Analog Discovery 2 with some software from the Stuff Made, and that seemed to work out okay. There's probably some enhancements it needs, and I'm not sure it's the most accurate software, uh, but for average audio, audio hobbyist, it's probably close enough. But there haven't been any updates to that in quite a while. So recently I got to thinking about maybe wanting something a little more progressive. And I went down this rabbit hole of looking at the audio precision devices. Uh, I looked at the old ones, which can get somewhat cost effective, but then you're back in this same Pete Millet space where you're using really old software, really old hardware drivers and whatnot. Or you jump forward to something modern, but you're at least 20 or 30 grand into that. And uh, I think for my just my bench use up here, I don't need a thirty thousand uh, dollar setup, so um, you know I started reading forum posts out there, and it looks like this Quant Asylum stuff has moved along significantly. Now, you may wonder, well, why did you give up on it to begin with, Mark? Well, the software just was not so great back in the day, and Matt over at Quant Asylum, they 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 have been releasing software iterations all along the way and um, really taking this thing to to new levels but that's not really what got me back into wanting to look at the quant asylum unit let me show you all right about four months ago tom christensen over at neurochrome made this youtube video and it was all about measuring distortion on the cheap and he went down the path of using like a Focusrite uh, Scarlet little box, which by the way, my microphone is wired through right now. Great little units and um, like the REW software. And then he also went into the new Q Quant Asylum QA403, which that's a couple iterations beyond the unit I was testing years ago. And he made a really good video about it. But even more than that, it turned into this forum on DIY audio that I got into and started following people talking about the QA403 and different aspects of it. This forum is worth reading. I'll post a link to it down below the video, but it's called Measuring Distortion on the Cheap out here on DIY Audio. It's up to nine pages at this point. And if you'll notice here, you've got Tom Christensen, Tom CHR posting, and this guy here named Mark, Mark Zachman, uh, goes by Speaky on here. Um, but what they're talking about here, and this post I've got highlighted is, uh, is kind of what really drew me in. So while the Quant Asylum QA403 software has been continuing to iterate, it's not necessarily specifically designed just for kind of stereo audio measurements, right? It, it's made for microphones or impedance measurements, lots of different things. And so it's not quite what the Pete Millet software was uh, back in the day. But this guy here, Joost, or Joost Breeds, he went out and wrote some software, made it open source, that was designed to do what I'm just talking about. And then Speaky came along, grabbed his base code, and has just taken it to whole new levels at this point in time. And I think it's funny here. He says, frankly, I'd rather Matt at Quant Asylum use my code as a base or at least learning. There's a lot of controversy in this thread about kind of the intuitiveness and ease of use of the Quant Asylum software versus uh, this other software. So if you then bounce from that over to the actual Quant Asylum website, uh, they've got a forum post section. And in there, 
you can find this QA 40 X plot thread and it started out by Mark Z and what he's got here is he's got his software and he's showing what he's doing with it. He's showing some iterations he's made on it. People are giving him some feedback. Uh, matter of fact, yesterday, and by the way, I made a mention here. I wish this guy would take some PayPal or Venmo. Love to donate some dollars to his uh, calls here. But, uh, you know, I've, I posted a little bug yesterday I found in the software. It wasn't an hour or two later. The guy says, uh, see it. I'll fix it in the next release. And then I had a question about something and he kind of answered how how I could go about doing what I was looking for. So super on top of things. I'm just glad to have something that's active and out there. So couple more things to check out. Got a thing here, his latest release. So if you go to that, it'll actually take you over to GitHub and you can find version 1.12. If you'll notice, uh, he's been through quite a few iterations here in just a short amount of time. But then that's where you download the software from. And if you come back over here in this main page overview, Man, has he gone into detail and he shows all the iterations of updates he's made and what what he's done to each version. But he goes in to talk about what this software is about, what he's working on, photos of the product, you know, just lots of detail. And if you click the help button in the actual software, it's got a wealth of information there. So uh, Mark, hats off to you, man, doing, doing a great job here. Uh, let's go take a look at the software, though. It's probably why you're here. All right, before we get into the software, let's look at how I would hook this up for a typical, call it audio bench, stereo type setup, okay? So first off, I've got the unit sitting on my bench and I am feeding it USB-wise over here via this powered USB port. In other words, it has its own little wall warp feeding power to it and which is feeding into this. If you come directly out of a laptop or desktop into the Quant Asylum, it doesn't provide enough power to do all the uh, functional tests that it needs to do. So you need to power it with a USB hub. Next up, um, the output of this. I just came out of the plus right, plus left, and I fed over into the back of this little 3.5 millimeter um, phono jack here um, with the left channel on one, the right channel on the other, and then the, the two grounds tied together here. And then I brought it down here and I'm feeding it into the back of this little amplifier. The input into the Quant Asylum, all I'm doing with the left channel is I am tapping it across a dummy load resistor. The right channel, I'm tapping it across another dummy load resistor. So inside this little chassis, there are two 8 ohm, 250 watt, non-inductive Dell resistors. And all this little chassis is, it's an old HP switch with a bunch of BNC panels on the front of it. And all I did was gut it. I found this thing at Hamfest years and years ago. And then I just kind of tapped out the front here to different things. So I've got like the left channel here going over my oscilloscope on one channel, the right channel here going to another, which just means I'm tapping across one resistor versus the other. And if you guys will remember, inside of this thing, I used to have the Analog to Discovery 2 unit. And all I have done is taken the BNC connectors here that used to feed the Analog Discovery 2 and via a whole bunch of ugly cables that are way too long because I didn't have the right lengths, I have fed them over into the Quant Asylum unit. I'll get all this cleaned up. Matter of fact, I ordered a little rack mount, uh, one new rack mount they have for this. And ultimately I'm gonna end up mounting it over here below this so I can just patch back and forth over here. So I'll get it all cleaned up. It's ugliness right now, but it's functional, okay? And then the only other thing I did here is I put some uh, 50 ohm terminators um, onto the negative of the inputs and outputs. And that's, that's there, you don't wanna short them completely because if you happen to put some on the output these act as a little bit of dummy load but from a terminator standpoint they basically uh, kill all the noise on those jacks so pretty simple little setup there let's get going over here with the software all right guys i'm going to caveat this by saying i'm a day and a half into this software i'm just super excited about it and i think it's going to do a lot of the things that i want it to do here 
So first off, Spectrum tab, right? You can just uh, go in here and say, hey, I'm going to generate a one kilohertz sign using the generator, or you cannot use the generator and start it. And then what you're doing is you're just listening to the noise floor of this amplifier right here. And I've got this summary data on here. Let me go over here to power markers. If you'll notice right here at around, what is that? 60 hertz dead on, eh, minus 70 some dB. But, but even more so interesting right here at around 50 some dB, I've got 120 hertz, which is typically rectified. So your power that's actually feeding the rest of the amp, there's some noise here from that on this on this little unit. Um, and then you start to see out here, but you can come in here and say, hey, let's use the generator. Let me stop that. And I'm gonna tell it to insert a one kilohertz tone. And you can see right here at one kilohertz, I've got a tone that goes up. And you can see right here at two kilohertz, first harmonic, second, so on. You see the harmonics, you can tell it here to turn on the harmonic markers and it tells you at what dB level down they are. Same thing with these power markers here. Um, I can tell it to give me uh, kind of summary graph data as a whole on this unit. I'm really liking this. I can turn the right channel on, so I'm superimposing. So up here then I've got right channel and left channel and you can see um, you know, I'm uh, here, I'm minus 4.3 dB, minus 4.35. Tells you exactly how much gain you're getting out of each channel. I, I like that a lot because I can, I can then tell how balanced this amplifier is. And I'm putting out 0 0.046 watts at this point. But let's say one of these sides had 16 dB and the other was 14 dB. I might have a channel uh, imbalance at that point. So there's a lot you can tell with this. And you kind of got a combination of a noise floor. And with this generator function here, you've got the ability then to, uh, to insert a tone and look at your harmonics of this amplifier. I love this feature. I can come in here and click Save, and I can save my settings. So the next time I open this software back up, anything, anything I may have changed or said or any of these checkboxes, I could just go click Load, pull that up, and boom, all those settings are right here, okay? Intermodulation distortion functionality here. I've not played around with this much yet. Um, may do that later this afternoon. We've got an oscilloscope setting, setting here. I don't know how function, functional that is, but if you were actually feeding this amplifier with something besides the Quantasylum output, then um, you could see what, you know, you could use this as an oscilloscope, basically. You've got the ability here to do THD versus frequency. So let me kick this off and see what happens here. So what I love about it, not only do you have the primary total harmonic distortion, you've got all the individual artifacts as well here that it's measuring against. And you can see some of these exist up to a certain point and then they're completely gone. But like if I drop some of these off, um, I can see that, you know, I got a little bit of distortion and I got to figure out what this little anomaly is that's happening here at the very end but um, I really like you know what you can do here and then you can overlay the right channel and see that it's very similar uh, playing out let me stop that THD versus amplitude so input voltage here 0.1 I'm gonna I'm gonna sweep a uh, thousand Hertz 8 ohm I'm gonna Turn the sampling rate up to 9600. Let's start this. So this is a good example of sweeping from 0.1 to 1. Check this out. I can come over here on the x-axis here and I can say fit to data. And then it says, okay, it kind of zooms in for me. Or you can change any of these at any point to kind of zoom out. But I love this fit to data. And you can kind of see here your distortion as the amount of input voltage goes up. And I could change that to not end at one volt. I could say, let's end at two volts and start it again and see what happens. Probably overdriving this amplifier at two volts, to be honest. So we'll see what happens here. No, it actually held together. This next tab confused me a little bit. I made a post about it in the forum and uh, Mark replied to me. What I didn't realize was this, I saw this as the impedance setting tab and I thought, I don't know if I'll really use that. 
So I asked him, where is your just traditional frequency response tab like you would have in a audio analyzer? And what I didn't realize is over here, you can do a drop down to save response and it changes the title at the top of the tab. And then from there, I can say like sweep 20 to 20 kilohertz. And you can use chirp, which is just a really fast way to kind of chirp across the band here from 20 to 20 kilohertz and run that. I can also come over here and say superimpose the right channel on top of that. And I'll turn off the thick line so I can see that. But if I, if I don't use chirp and I run this, and maybe I raise the sampling rate up to 96K, you can see it does more of a traditional plot like I've been used to. The good news is the frequency response on this amplifier up here above about 30 hertz is pretty darn flat from 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I don't know if you can ask for a lot better there. And then this last tab here is just an... Uh, you, tell it if you if you're measuring uh, anything power or you're telling it what what um, impedance dummy load you're using here and honestly I have not played around with gain here at all um, I don't know I'll get to that this afternoon I just starting to get going with this software guys but I am super excited about it already I'm happy I bought I, and at this time they did not send me a free Quant Asylum. I actually went and bought this one. I felt like they gave me one before. I don't want to ask again. Just super excited about this, guys. I, I'm not telling you to go out and buy one of these. What I'm saying is, is it's probably worth following and watching. And if it continues to develop, it, I mean, it may already be there. This is pretty darn rock solid. Let me show you one thing. All right, just uh, yesterday, Mark posted this. Here's what I'm currently working on as time permits. There's a mile-long wish list, but in the next few weeks, one, he wants to talk directly to the USB instead of the REST interface. This should improve some performance. By the way, earlier versions of the software, you actually had to have the Quant Asylum software running and then run this on top of it. He's changed that. That's no longer required. Uh, he's going to add additional units of measure, such as DBU, and he's working on adding historical data so you can see more than one, than one output on screen, which is pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. I made a post even this morning about I'm on this forum saying, hey, when I was trying to run a frequency seek sweep past 20 kilohertz, because uh, I do like to be able to see artifacts beyond 20 kilohertz, I was getting this little error. Someone's already replied that I need to set my sample rate to 192K. So great that it's an active forum and people are uh, giving feedback out here. So guys, I'm just excited about this. want to make I say quick video while my videos are 20 minutes. Hope you enjoyed and we'll come back more once I master this software and all things about it and get my bench cleaned up a little bit and uh, we'll make a more in-depth video at that point in time. Thanks everybody. See you guys soon.